Hi, this is Josh with Resort TV One. Today we're taking a look at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. We hope you enjoyed the video. And today we're starting on the Transportation and Ticket Center side of the resort. And this walkway connects the Polynesian Resort to the Transportation and Ticket Center. And it's a great way to walk back and forth, especially if you're staying at the Polynesian and you want to go to Epcot. It's actually faster to walk to the monorail from the resort and get on the monorail to Epcot at the TTC rather than taking the monorail all the way around the loop back to the TTC that way. So just a suggestion. And by the way, it's a beautiful day to look at the Polynesian Resort here. And here you can see a map that gives you an overview of the resort itself. And there are several different buildings at the resort, including the smaller bungalows at the top, which are vacation club, as well as the larger longhouses that house most of the rooms in the resort. And all around the resort, there's this Polynesian decoration, such as these tiki god-like structures, as well as just different tropical plants. And again, it's a beautiful day. So you can see the, the blue sky up against the longhouse is great. And all of the longhouses are named, I believe, after either islands in Polynesia, or they could be tribes. I think they're all named after islands, though. This is one of the entryways to one of the longhouses. And again, the vegetation is just so lush and just makes you really feel like you're in Polynesia, Hawaii, any of those type of places. And these longhouses are named longhouses because they are very long. And of course, they're much longer than the longhouses that the Polynesian culture used to uh, build, but they're still reminiscent of that. You can see the signs pointing to different locations in the resort. These paths are so pleasant to walk down, and it's, this is one of, why it's one of my favorite resorts. Because it's a resort that you can just walk around and it just instantly relaxes you. You feel like you're in a tropical paradise because you are. And so we'll continue down the path a little while here. You can see one of the other longhouses on the left. And there are a lot of green spaces where they just have a lot of open green grass, which is very calming and peaceful as well. Now you can see a nice sitting area. And again, the beautiful blue sky. And some of the taller skinnier trunked palm trees there. I'm not sure on the exact varieties of all the palm trees, but I do enjoy looking at them. And here you can see another one of the peaked roofs of the one of the longhouses here. And you can see it's connected in the middle there to another peaked roof. And I love the designs on the edge of those triangular roofs with the triangular designs. And you can see some more of those triangular designs there on this building. And it's very evocative of the Polynesian culture. There's a closer look at some of those geometric designs I was talking about. And this is Tangaroa Foyer. And Tangaroa Terrace is a wonderful restaurant here at the Polynesian Resort. And it's definitely worth checking out. And you can see there even one of the masks on the side of the building that's evocative again in the Polynesian culture. And you can also see there's some construction walls up, but it's really just minor refurbishment going on next to one of the longhouses. And I can't resist showing more shots of this beautiful blue sky, which really brings out the colors in this wonderful resort. And here's the entrance to one of the quiet pools. And some of the longhouses that surround it. This courtyard here where this pool is, is very peaceful. And there you can see the entrance to the quiet pool itself. When we say quiet, that doesn't necessarily mean it's super quiet. It's still a large pool, but it's maybe more quiet than the main lava pool, which is behind the uh, Grand Ceremonial House. It has a lot more play areas for kids and things like that. And there you can see as we walk around this quiet pool, you can also see the Grand Ceremonial House with all the lean-to style lumber there on the top. And we'll look at that again in a little bit. And here's a look at this pool. And you can see some of the cabanas with the triangular roofs there. As well as again, some of the very nice and lush vegetation there. The architecture, even throughout these pool areas, is very harmonious with the rest of the triangular theming of the rest of the resort. And I really like that they've taken the time to do that. Well, now we're out in front of the resort itself, the main entrance. And I told you that we started on the transportation and ticket center side. And this is the main entrance now where people arrive by car or by bus. 
And I love the tiki torches that are featured throughout the resort, as well as these very lush ponds with the waterfalls there. Of course, the main waterfalls in the Grand Ceremonial House that used to be there are gone now. However, we still have this lush area here in front of the main entrance, and it's very pleasant to look at. Just give you a second to enjoy the view here in 4K on this beautiful sunny day. And more of the tiki style decorations there. And there's actually a little bridge that goes over this waterway as you enter the resort itself, so that's really nice theming as well. And it's just so peaceful here. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that peaceful look at the front of the resort there. And now we're going to go into the main entrance here. This is the main lobby, the Grand Ceremonial House, as it's called. And if you remember, it used to have a gigantic water feature in the middle with waterfalls on four sides and all kinds of uh, tropical plants and vegetation. And unfortunately, I guess they felt that the lobby here in the Grand Ceremonial House was too cramped. And so they took it out in favor of this much, much, much smaller water feature, which is nice if this had been the only thing that was ever there. Unfortunately, it's a little bit disappointing compared to what was there before. I still love the resort, it's still my favorite resort. However, I am very disappointed that the main water feature in the Grand Ceremonial House is gone. That's one of the things that, I don't mind change, but that's one of the things that bothered me the most, one of the changes that has bothered me the most in recent years. And here's kind of an artist rendition of what the resort looks like. And it's nice that they've actually included the bungalows there in the back. And you can even see the castle and some of the Magic Kingdom. You can see Big Thunder Mountain and also Space Mountain there in the back. So that's a nice touch. I do like the decorations there hanging from the ceiling as well as the skylight there that covers the whole middle part of the lobby. That's nice as well. And we'll show you some of the features of the lobby here in the Grand Ceremonial House. We'll look at the main shop there in just a minute, but let's look at the rear of that water feature. There's actually no water on the back side of it. It's just a water fountain in the front, but it's still nice. It's just a lot smaller than the original. And this is the main shop on the first floor of the resort. I love the play on words there, boutique -y. It's kind of a nice creative thing there that they've done. And this is more of a clothing shop. They've got lots of different merchandise here, but it's mainly clothes and accessories and things like that. And there are a lot of different options and a lot of uh, very nice Hawaiian or Polynesian style apparel as well as actually themed merchandise from the Polynesian resort itself. But it's different than a lot of the shops in the Disney property here. And you can see some of the tiki god decorations here. I love that one. He's kind of looking through the window almost a little creepy like he's watching you. It's kind of funny. So just an overview of some of the merchandise here. And I do like in some of the shops like this one how Disney really does take the time to actually have different types of merchandise and that it's not all the same. Uh, there have been complaints in the past where merchandise is similar in a lot of the shops, but they've done better in this case. And by the way, this is one of my favorite tiki decorations here. He looks really happy or crazy. I'm not sure which, but either way, I think it's a lot of fun. And here's some of the great Polynesian themed shirts that you can get. And it's neat on the ceiling, the torches kind of flicker and flash too. And you can see some of the shops on the second floor, which we'll look at in a few minutes. And a really nice display window right next to Boutique. 
And right also right next to Boutique, you'll also see Disney Vacation Club. Of course, they have to have that here because they have the Vacation Club bungalows, and you can see there's a demonstration area there where you can go in and talk to a Disney specialist about Vacation Club if that's something you're interested in. And now there are two main stairways that go up to the balcony or the second floor of the Grand Ceremonial House. And this one is the one right next to Ohana. And this stonework is beautiful and it's kind of what forms the border between the stairway and Ohana itself. And you can see just over the plants there, that's the Ohana restaurant. And if you remember from the Stitch movie, Ohana means family, which is very fitting for a restaurant like Ohana that actually serves the food family style. A lot of it's rotisserie and I'll show you that here in just a minute. And it has a really nice dark wood bar area. And there's the main sign for the restaurant. And as we go in here, you can see a lot of the Polynesian style decorations. It's a very large restaurant, lots of different tables, but it's also very popular, so it's a good thing there are a lot of tables. And you can see more of the decorations, some spears and things like that. And the neat thing is, depending on where you sit, you'll have a great view of the Magic Kingdom itself as well as the new Happily Ever After Fireworks show, which they do pipe in the music here, at least the last time I ate here they did. And there you can see the rotisserie, as well as the rest of the restaurant, which is very large and has lots of windows with great views. The food here is really good. I'd highly recommend it if you haven't eaten at Ohana. It's a great place to try. And this is actually the lounge and waiting area for people to come into the restaurant. And as you can see, it is a very popular restaurant because they have a large waiting area, even though it's afternoon, Middle afternoon, people aren't ready lining up for dinner yet, but it is a very popular restaurant, so make sure you get reservations if you go. And we'll take a look at some of the decorations that hang from the ceiling from the second floor, as well as down to the first floor of the lobby again, just to give you a bird's eye view. And across the way, we'll take a look at Kona Cafe. Kona Cafe is another wonderful restaurant here at the Polynesian. It's more of a... Uh, it's still a table service restaurant, but it's a little bit more of a casual style restaurant as opposed to Ohana, which is a little bit more formal. Uh, not completely formal, but this is a little more casual, a little more fun. You can tell by the decorations. It's a really fun place to eat. And uh, they've got a lot of different food selections that are really fun. We've eaten there as well. They also have the Kona Island coffee stand, which has lots of different coffees as well as some different pastries and even breakfast items at certain times of the day. And this is the, right next to Kona Cafe, the monorail entrance here. And you can see now that they've changed the security, they actually do have the security kiosk here right before you get onto the monorail so that by the time you get to the Magic Kingdom, you just get off the monorail and go straight into the park itself. Back inside the Grand Ceremonial House from the monorail stand there, you can see a sign pointing you to different locations throughout the resort. And you saw Spirit of Aloha the luau, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. There you can see another bird's eye view of the first floor. And there's another shop here in the Grand Ceremonial House. This one's called Moana Mercantile, and it's divided into two sections. This section is more for children's merchandise. There's a lot of toys, stuffed animals, kids' clothes, even fun dresses for little girls and toys for boys, all kinds of great stuff. And I love the theming here. You can see the uh, lean-to roof over there as well as some of the netting and the thatched roof over the cash register here. It's a lot of fun. And these are the kind of details I think Disney does best and I hope people take time to notice these because it's not just a shop, there's a lot more to it. And this is the second part of Moana Mercantile. It's called the same thing, but this section is all about food. So you can see there's a large section of coolers over there with different types of drinks and milk and things like that, as well as different candy items. And now from the second floor, we'll take a look down at the main pool area, the lava pool outside in the main courtyard there. But before we do that, we'll go back down the stairs and we'll take a look at the rest of the first floor of the Grand Ceremonial House. First of all, down the hall from Boutique, you'll see several nice display windows with posters featuring old movies and TV shows, as well as famous Disney characters and other people. 
And there you can see Walt and Lillian. Looks like they had their own Hawaiian vacation. They look a little concerned in that picture about something, or maybe they were just relaxing, I'm not sure. But it's nice to see Walt and Lillian either way. And now we'll take a look at Captain Cook's, which is the counter service restaurant here in the Grand Ceremonial House. And as you'd expect from most counter service restaurants at Disney, they've got hamburgers, they've got flatbread pizza, sandwiches, and a variety of other counter service type options, which are great if you're in a hurry and just want something quick to eat and don't want to take the time to do a table service restaurant. And you can see it's fairly, fairly popular. They've got coolers here with lots of different drink items. And we'll take a look at the menu here. And they used to have Dole Whip in here, but that's been moved outside to the Pineapple Lanai, which we'll take a look at here in just a minute. Another look at the eating area here. And outside Captain Cook's, there's this beautiful painting depicting sea life and different divers. Now we're going to go down this hallway, which leads to Trader Sam's, which is a great bar. And we actually did a video on that a year or two ago, so take a look at our channel for that. But in the meantime, we'll take a look at Pineapple Lanai, which is a great place to get Dole Whip. They've moved it outside. It's a little bit easier to get to, and there's a nice eating area with some tables around, so you can enjoy everybody's favorite treat, Dole Whip. And now we're outside, just behind the Grand Ceremonial House, in kind of a courtyard area here. On this wonderful day, you can see barely a cloud in the sky and you can see the volcano part of the lava pool and I love this courtyard this grass in front of me looks just about perfect because it's actually a type of astroturf and you can even see the castle there great look at Cinderella Castle and this is a look at a banyan tree which is right behind the grand ceremonial house here and these banyan trees are known for having their trunks segmented like you can see there it's a really neat look and a very interesting type of tree. This is the back of the Grand Ceremonial House and you can see the back of Captain Cook's restaurant there. And we'll take a look at the main pool which is called the Lava Pool and you can see it's a volcano type formation there that's actually part of a water slide as well as the main pool that kind of looks out onto the Seven Seas Lagoon. Before we look at the pool though we'll take a look at the back of the Grand Ceremonial House and there you can see the big timbers there at the top of the house itself giving it that distinctive lean-to look and the waterfalls are beautiful there on the side of the volcano there or the mountain you can even see the Grand Floridian off in the distance even though it is the main pool and it's a little bit more active and busy it's still a beautiful place to be and also, this is the Hawaii building, which is the club section of the resort. So there you can see the sign there pointing you to the club. And you can also see, just outside that building, there's a great view of Cinderella Castle across the Seven Seas Lagoon. And from this beach is a beautiful view of the Grand Floridian, as well as the bungalows, which are the vacation club part of the resort. And there's another view of that Hawaiian longhouse there. And there's a beach here, but you can see again the ropes up to make sure people don't get in the water, and that's important. And you can see the fire pit, which they do events there on certain evenings. So marshmallow roast, I believe, and campfire stories and things like that. And you can see the boat dock where you can catch a boat to the Magic Kingdom. And now we'll look back at the pool area from the back side. And you can see a great view again of the Grand Ceremonial House there with the timbers in the lean-to style. And right next to the pool you get a great view of the Grand Floridian as well as the Wedding Pavilion. And here's another look at some of the other longhouses. And this, these longhouses actually surround an inlet where you can rent boats. It's almost like a harbor here. 
and it's very beautiful the way they've let the water on this inlet come all the way up to the buildings and you can see the small watercraft there as well as the grand ceremonial house in the background again and here's the marina the seven seas marina where you can rent the boats and here's the menu that shows you the boat rental prices So we'll take another look at this harbor or, or inlet here. And you can see the small boats there. They used to call those a water mouse or water mice. I'm not sure what they call them now, but they're a lot of fun. So if you haven't done those, it's really worth a try. Two people can ride in them and they're just a lot of fun to drive around. And now we're all the way over by the Luau Cove, the Spirit of Aloha as it's called. And we're still in the middle of the afternoon, so it's not open right now, but we're going to get as close to it as we can, and we'll take you on a nice, pleasant walk through this path that leads up to it. It's very pleasant today, so I'll just let you enjoy the walk through this part of the resort. And there's the main sign for the dinner show. And the path that goes back to the dinner show is just so lush and tropical. You really feel like you're on a tropical island. Disney is so great at making these immersive, beautiful areas for guests to enjoy. Even as you're waiting for a table, there's a banyan tree surrounded by these benches that's just absolutely unbelievable. So relaxing to me. And there's the entrance to the luau itself. You can see the sign, Spirit of Aloha, and that's the main stage area, but because it is closed, we won't be able to go in right now. So we'll head back towards the main part of the resort. Well, that's it from Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. We hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Bye-bye. Now that you've finished watching this video, make sure you're subscribed so you can get all the latest updates. And also check out some other great videos on our channel. Thanks for being a part of the Resort TV One family.